in this video, I want to demonstrate the strength duration curve and how the strength duration curve governs what peripheral nerves, sensory, motor, uh, are depolarized when you are using pulsed current uh, to transcutaneously uh, stimulate those nerves, that is with surface electrodes uh, that are delivering current uh, to the body. In this video, I will sh first show you uh, the actual strength duration curve and uh, the kind of the theory of how that works. And then right after that, we will see that demonstrated in a person uh, using a TENS unit to, um, again, demonstrate how you might cross the different um, curves, strength duration curves for sensory and or uh, a motor response. On this slide, you'll see a very simplified representation of the strength duration curves for sensory nerves and for motor nerves. On the vertical axis, you'll see current strength, and that's just the amount of electrical current that is going through the tissues uh, in milliamps. On the horizontal axis, you'll see pulse duration, and that's just uh, how long each electrical pulse lasts uh, and that is typically expressed in microseconds to uh, milliseconds. So the two curves here indicate what combination of a particular current strength and a particular pulse duration is required for that type of nerve to depolarize and be activated, do its thing. Anything down in here below the sensory curve, any combination of a certain current strength and a certain pulse duration, anything down in here is not going to depolarize any nerves. And so the client won't feel anything and they'll have no motor response. Basically, nothing's going to happen even though you are delivering some electrical current of a particular uh, current strength and a particular pulse duration. As soon as you cross that sensory strength duration curve, now the client will feel something because you have depolarized uh, some sensory nerves. So anything that has crossed that sensory strength duration curve uh, will cause the client to feel something, typically a tingling or prickling or something, but uh, they'll, they'll feel a response. You could uh, cross that curve by having a particular pulse duration and then increasing the current strength until right there you've crossed the sensory nerve, okay? You could cross that sensory curve by having a particular current strength and then gradually increasing the pulse duration until right there you've again crossed the sensory strength duration curve. One thing that's important to note about this is that if you want to get only a sensory response and no motor response, which is what you want with conventional or high frequency TENS, uh, you can set your pulse duration fairly short. Uh, and if you set your pulse duration fairly short, then when you increase the current strength, you will cross that sensory strength duration curve, the client will feel it, but pretty much no matter how high they turn the current strength up, no matter how high they turn that intensity up, they're never going to hit the motor curve. That way you are ensuring they'll only have sensory and never motor uh, stimulation from your um, treatment. In order to um, cross the or get a motor response, um, you just have to have a combination of pulse duration and current strength that then cross that motor strength duration curve. So typically, for a motor response, we're going to set our pulse duration uh, a fair amount higher so that when then when you increase the current strength, now we have a sensory response, and now we're able to get a motor response when we cross the motor curve too. Note that any... Um, combination of strength and duration that crosses the motor strength duration curve, so you actually get movement, uh, will have first crossed the sensory strength duration curve. They're always going to feel it before you get a motor response. 
Next, let's look at what that uh, actually looks like in a client using a TENS unit. So initially, I have my pulse width set really, really low. Uh, it's about 30 microseconds. So that's a really short pulse duration. And if you look at your strength duration curve, you'll see that with that pulse duration, it's going to be hard to hit the motor curve. So let's just turn on the intensity a little bit. I have the pulse rate or pulse frequency set at 4 hertz, 4 pulses per second, just for demonstration. So do you feel anything at this point? No. Okay. And so without feeling anything, we're going to slowly increase the intensity. And just let me know when you feel something. Okay, so at this point, my client feels it. And what does it feel like? Like a pulsing tingling. Okay, like a pulsing tingling. Um, and is it mild or intense? Mild. Okay, so I'm going to turn up just a little bit more. Let me know when you need me to stop. How does that feel? Fine. Getting stronger? Yeah. Okay. How does it feel? Good. Getting stronger? Okay. Now you can see at this point, I have it turned up as far as it will possibly go. The intensity is turned up as high as it can go. And still we have no motor response. That's because my pulse duration or pulse width is set very, very low. And we can't hit the strength duration curve for a motor response at that point. Now I'm going to put this somewhere in the middle here. How does that feel? Okay. And with that set somewhere in the middle, I'm going to slowly increase my pulse duration. So my intensity will stay fixed and I'm going to increase the pulse duration and we'll see what happens with that. Now you can see by increasing the pulse duration, we've crossed the motor strength duration curve. And I did that just by increasing pulse duration or pulse width. Now that we are across both sensory and motor curves, I can then again decrease my intensity. Now we don't have a motor response anymore. We've backed up back across that curve between the sensory and motor curves. And what do you feel now? Just the pulsing tingling. And so now my client just feels the pulsing um, that little kind of tingly pulsing, but no motor response. So you can see that with either pulse duration or intensity, or really both pulse duration, pulse intensity, you can control which curve, sensory or motor, you're going to cross and therefore what response you're going to get.